if you're gonna, sorry, Matt. Yeah, go on. Uh, with me, right? If you want me to do, or you want me to do something, if yeah. you want me to do it, yeah. is to ask me shit because I'm kind of like a Pavlov dog. I well, yeah, 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 yeah. Whereas mm -hmm. if it's just if you said to me, go and do something at the camera, I'd be fucking shit. I've got it. I know mm -hmm. what I'm gonna do. All right. Mm -hmm. Hello. It's episode one of Shoe Gaze with me, Burgundy Blood, and my friend Neil Hurd. We're off to Northampton Shoe Museum, where they have an archive of uh, how many? 1,500 shoes or more. Of which shoes. 700 are uh, vintage trainers. 700 vintage trainers. There's some beauties in there. We have exclusive access, which is very exciting, and we're completely honoured and humbled by the opportunity. I'm going to share it with the world. Shoe gaze. shoes immediately as we walk in. These funky things here with the stripes, nice shoes. These are from the Memphis, the Italian Memphis movement from the 1980s. Nice kicks. Funky joints, man. I would wear them. Maybe if I was a transvestite. Batman sneaker, free with every pair. Right, no. Going deep. This entire rack, all the racking is full of shoes. So we have 15,000 shoes. So there's probably about 14,000 here. There's about 1,000 on display. And in terms of trainers, we probably have about 700 examples, which are all in alphabetical what, brand the trainers are? order. Oh, yeah. yeah. Just seeing now, look. If Starting with. Adidas um, yeah. Ultra Star. No way. So everything is in a box with a little sense. label on. Yeah. 2011. Oh, no, eight, 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 five. That's the first issue then. Yeah. We'll get there, mate, after. Wow. <laughs> How good is this? I know. Also, look at it. <laughs> this is a pair of shoes I've been looking for for a long time. I got a pair the other day. There are other games. Wow, look at that man, look at the condition man. Woo Spirit of the Games, which is a very rare shoe, you don't see it very often. Um, I think it was 1984 for the Olympics, LA Olympics. It's just something I didn't probably like so much at the time, but I've come to really like now because I can look at them and think there's nothing else around like them. You know, you just don't see that doing the tiny little thin stripe with the Addy and that kind of boot shape and even that kind of finish. The logo is kind of what I like, but no one else has got it basically. This is going to be, this is one of the most mind blowing shoes of all time. The micro pacer. Which is battered now, but if you think that was 1985 and all of a sudden out the blue, yeah. they were putting a computer pedometer in there. Look at the connection where it goes down and connected the steps to your foot and links to the computer. That's it. It's amazing. It's so ahead of its time. I think NASA had a part in them, didn't they? Sneaker Instructions for use. Sneaker exhibition so it's actually in America, oh, is it? a tape which runs from the, from the unit selection. down to that, must be inserted American. in the sole of the shoe. <laughs> but it was really expensive shoes when it came out, as you imagine. I think the most expensive shoe you could get in the, in the world at the time. But you know, you can think it's common or garden now because you've seen rear shoes, but to go back, what's well, 95 from now? 30 years ago? Is that what it is, yeah? 30 years ago. You know, that's bonkers technology. technology isn't it? You've seen this little set of Addy colour. Yeah. They got the shoes to match. Mm -hmm. There we go. Wow. 
This is the reissue as well, not the original is 70s it? one, yeah. Actually, that's the first like, idea of customising your shoes, yeah. there, right there. Mm. Again, you think, oh yeah, I've seen it before, blah de blah, but at the time, for a shoe yeah. to come blank, everybody knows about the Nike ID and all that now. Yeah. That's, that was ID before anything. I think somewhere down there as well, we've got the big paint kit one as well. Actual gouache, oh, is it? Yes. Acrylic. Look at this. <laughs> It's so beautiful. There's your colour charts. You've got all the models there. Twist or Hoff. Wow. The Claude Klosky for Colette. Is that, wow. is, is, do you reckon that's Colette in yeah, Paris? Paris? Yeah, yeah. He's an original picture. Oh, here we go. Oh, here we go. A little, little bit of the difference. Oh. Look at those babies. The original shoe, 1983, and then they've done a big all singing, all dancing, kind of in collaboration with Colette, the uh, fancy dance shop in Paris. Colette, oh. I want to pay my trainers, Papa. <laughs> oh, okay, take the limited edition box. Uh, <laughs> you need to do it for a long time. <laughs> oh, Bali, We've got a mid 80s ballet. Heavy D or someone would have worn these or Doggy Fresh. They're mint as well. And they're absolutely mint. I've got the little ballet crest there. Nice. This will be up your hip hop street. Take me down hip hop street. This bit of instinct. Oh yeah. Which is like a totally different style. That's when Maybe. Adidas tried to do like a troop. Like a messy thing. Trafile on the back. Yeah, big old basketball boots. Nice, Beastie Boy trainers. Mm, not my scene, but I get it. So these are the kind of Good trainers that Neil likes to wear <laughs> when, when, he's, when he's feeding his chickens. Yeah. <laughs> this is my first pair of training swap. Well, After the first kit, these were the first joints I had. Yeah, no, Berlin. Wicked. I wore them to Birchfield's Primary School. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Beer python. Oh man, I've never seen this before. That's some hip hop stuff. Thread and a needle and leather and cut of cotton and superb man. Look at those. Right at the very beginning of ours, yeah, that is. Really lovely, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Gorgeous. So that's pre, pre the off the wall logo look. This uh, got a colourway psychedelic, isn't it? That's cool. It's emotional. Woo! That's a gorgeous shoe, isn't it? Look at that. Beautiful. Burgundy or maroon, whatever you want to call it. That is a lovely shoe. I feel calm and I feel at one with, with the suede. I feel familiar with the burgundy. I feel confident, like I can, uh, I can make new friends. I feel like I'm making new friends with I'm, shoes. I'll meet an old friend. Meet an old friend. Here, my, I was telling you about earlier. One of my first pairs of Adidas I ever bought. 
ZX500. So it brings back a hell of a lot of memories there. When the big ones of the terrace wears, your casuals. Nice story the red reflects. Goodbye, old friend. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have seen you again. These were game changers. Yeah, Max 95. Oh yeah. yeah. It would have killed me for my Air Max 95s. <laughs> I like them, but they don't look good on me. Well, you know what? It's one of those things. I went into the shop. Remember, I hadn't bought trainers for like five, six years, as in new pairs, because they'd all just gone peak tongue. And I was only old, wearing all the old Addy. Yeah. I went in the shop, and these were sat there. Yeah. Imagine, I mean, they're crazy now, aren't they? Yeah. And I went in and I thought, they're disgusting, but I love them. <laughs> yeah. And I yeah. bought the fuckers. And I wore them like for a year. I wore them to death of that bubble burst. Yeah. But it was just like, even now I look at them and feel that same sort of thing. They are horrid, but they were so different and <laughs> yeah. so crazy. And that's how you date Nike shoes by the codes in the tongue. There it says 95-01-03, so they were made in March 1995. So you know that's an original first release. Like Air Max 95. It's supposed to be based on a skeleton on a human body. So that's like the spine. Oh my. All different bits. That's the rib cage. Some loony. And then on the same tip, it's these. I have these as well. You don't see these, are they? So it's a good find, is it? The Air Moxon. You don't dig these, man. Yeah, I never got, I never invested. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's that sort of ACG era, you yeah. know, like the walk-in running and then putting it into a moccasin top, which I think is a great idea. I actually had a pair of them, I must admit, for my sins. Sorry, all my idea. No, friends. it's good. It looks like, um, you know, when someone bakes a loaf of bread for the first time. Big shoe. I had a pair of these for my sins. Let me see that on camera. Foot skate. Which is another attempt, a new way of lacing the oh, inside, God. which again, this can seem sort of obvious now, but at the time it was groundbreaking. Crazy system. In fact, looking at them now, I think they're flipping ugly. But uh, they served a purpose. Now, this one, it's kind of like a cult classic. This has come right back into vogue. It wasn't so big when it came out, but everybody's loved it since. Start the ACG movement, the Lava Dome. So, this is when they were sort of moving into being leisure and walkwear, so the soles really, really solid. So they could walk and go through mud and up mountains, the big toe cap. Actually, the advert it was mountain biking, wasn't it? It was kind of like mountain, mountain biking. Well, yeah. Was it really? The advert was the dude doing mountain that. Bike, I yeah. think. Everything like that, the one yeah. that, you know, sort of like off roading. Right, it's normally the Raving. famous one, is in like, they pick out the details in neons and greens and pinks, but this is quite a subtle one. But funnily enough, they say at the time it was almost the end of night when they went down that road. He said it was one of the biggest mistakes they ever made, even though people love it. They started it. Sales started to go plummet. Swanky. Hey, you have you wouldn't let your daughter go home with a man in them <laughs> shoes, would you? You wouldn't let her anywhere near him. They kind of, I don't know, it kind of look, looks a bit like a kind of a vagina, if you excuse me, <laughs> excuse me. That's all right, that's the whole point of a shoe. <laughs> yes. You're slipping your foot in. <laughs> they are that kind of perverse, aren't oh, they? That's crazy. <laughs> I do dig all this. It's just They're so good. nice to see different, isn't it? Was it Playboy as a label? Smirling Imports, New York. Playboy Incorporated. That's a French shoe. It's a yeah. French copy of the Stan Smith, but yeah. it's nice. It's really nicely made. Damn right. They still sell them in uh, like an old man's shoe shop in, in, in France. I have to look into those, but I mean, that's basically a Stan Smith. Yeah. <laughs> I quite like it though, shape wise. Yeah, Same thing, just five perforations, I suppose. Yeah. Talk about the most hyped, the most famous, I suppose. Game changing trainer of all time, you could say. Yeah, Jordan. Commonly known as the bread, which was because it's black and red, but it was banned by the NBA. Jordan was banned from wearing it because it didn't have enough white on it for one rule. You have to have 50% white, and also it didn't have a white sole unit, so it had a red bottom. So the NBA banned him from wearing it, and every time he wore it, 
get a $5,000 fine, which Nike paid and obviously hyped. And then made the massive, big advertising campaigns saying banned by the NBA. And that was the start of the Air Jordan phenomenon. So it's quite a normal shoe, really. You know, I mean, it's not it's amazingly different to lots of Nike baskets which had gone before. But because it was such a game changer, it's become so infamous. So that's huge. So the original Jordan logo before the Jumpman came along, which didn't come till Jordan 3. Here's the date. 85 to show you us the real bona fide. So that's the 6th of April 1985 that baby was made. And I think if Jordan was a brand on its own, it'd be the fourth biggest shoe of all. You know, it'd be the fourth biggest, most successful brand in the world. And that's how big it was, and that was the start of it all. I know everybody knows them. The shoe which is taken for granted. Mr. Stan Smith himself. Oh, yeah. This was voted the top trainer of all time in that exhibition. Was it? It won, yeah. But it first came out in 66 as a French man was endorsed. It was Rob Haley, not Stan Smith. And it was only in 72 that when Stan Smith became champion and Rob Haley wasn't so good that they put Stan Smith onto it. But even then at the same time, you used to have his face, but it'd have Haley written on it. It wasn't until 78. You want to be a real boring nerd. I mean, you take it for granted, you see it everywhere now, don't you? But I do love that shoe. It was the first all leather tennis shoe designed by Paul Stassler himself. Addy's son, Paul Stassler. He designed it with a guy called Chris Seven, I think. And Haley himself, they all had an input on it. But it was the first all leather shoe. Well, it's been brilliant. I'm not going to say any more than that. <laughs> Great, it's couldn't great. have asked for more. Yeah, that's alright. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, that's alright. <laughs> you smell nice, what's that perfume? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's some citrus, it's like a. Like a natural one, yeah, like a Joe like Malone a sort of thing. Lime and lemony thing. Mm.